it's interesting when we read about uh, Paul in the New Testament, uh, we understand that Paul was an apostle and served God and was a missionary and traveled all over. And we're going to begin to look at his life uh, starting next week uh, in more detail. But I've often seen people say, you know, Paul was a tent maker in his profession. And I've thought to myself, you know, obviously that does come from Scripture, but is that the reality? Uh, because certainly as you as a church have been faithful in your offering, the majority of that goes to the salaries of the staff here in the Orlando church. And you guys have continued to be very faithful in your giving. And I do believe we have a great staff team here in the Orlando church and have been grateful to have added to that staff over the last three years. We'd like to keep that staff intact. We love serving this church. It is our joy to be with you. Uh, it is not nearly as fun uh, to Zoom call you and sit at home and minister to you over the web, but Praise God that we have that opportunity right now. But what about Paul the tent maker versus Paul the apostle of Christ? Uh, the idea that Paul was a tent maker really comes from one verse in the entire New Testament, and that's in Acts 18, where it says, After, Paul, after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and there he met a Jew named Aquila and his wife Priscilla. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them, and every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. And you know what? In this time when Paul arrived in Corinth and spent time as a tent maker with Priscilla and Aquila, he sure got a lot of mileage out of that moment. And he reminds the Corinthian church many times of that. He says, I did not ask you for anything when I preached the good news to you. I'd made myself poor so that you would be made rich. Some of the time I had no money when I was with you, but I did not ask you for money. I did not ask you and will not ask you for anything. And so there is sort of this thought out there that that's what Paul did. That was his model of ministry was to provide for himself and to minister on the side, Paul the tent maker. The truth is though, if you continue to read those passages, it says in Acts 18 when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul then devoted himself exclusively to preaching and testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. And in that same passage that Paul is talking to the Corinthians that he was not supported by them financially. He also says this. He says, I did take money from other churches. I used it while I worked with you so that you would not have to pay me. The Christians from the country of Macedonia brought me what I needed. So that's really what happened is as Paul arrived, he began to work as a tent maker. But as soon as Silas and Timothy arrived with a gift from Macedonia, that supplied Paul with what he needed so that he could minister full time. And I think we realize that Paul the apostle, supported by the churches, was very effective in the work that he did. And so I know it does feel self-serving for me as a minister of the church to continue to urge us as a church to give financially. Uh, but I, I want to tell you that it, in my own conscience, I have wrestled with this in Scripture. I have wrestled even with the calling of being a tent maker. And I can tell you that everyone on staff here in Orlando has had that tent maker phase in their life. I think of Eddie and Lepatic, who actually did not go into the full-time ministry until they were in their 40s. I've spent many, many years doing structural engineering. But I just can tell you that we are very grateful for your offering. We're very grateful as a staff to have support during this time. And I did ask the staff, all of them, if they would be willing to make some temporary cutbacks in our personal finances and our regional finances, plus the savings of our facilities such that we could cut our budget as a church for 15, about 15% during this time. And I even told the staff, email me privately if that's a financial burden to you. Uh, and so all, not one of them emailed me privately saying, yeah, that would be tough. All of them had a sense of solidarity about it, saying, let's cut back, let's ride this out with the church, let's save the church some money, and this is such an unprecedented time, but I'm very grateful for the staff uh, that we do have. I'm also very grateful uh, for God's protection for us, in a way. Um, certainly, this is a precarious time, uh, and I know that, again, there are some who have been furloughed, some are out of work, uh, but I think of us in the United States, uh, certainly we do have some great options. Uh, many of you have received stimulus checks. Some are on paid leave. Uh, some are able to work at home. 
uh, and some are even furloughed and able to access unemployment funding. And again, these are not ideal situations, but I think of us at least having those options here in Orlando. And I do uh, think it was very uh, just fortuitous or really providential from God that two years ago, we as a church embarked on Financial Peace University. And if you remember all those lessons back then, they urged us to save. Uh, an emergency fund, and then urged us to attack our debt and pay off our debt, and then urged us to build a three to six months reserve. And obviously the wisdom of all that is being shown right now. And I know that it takes us you know, years for some of us to get in that position. Hopefully you are remaining faithful to that journey. I know for my wife and I, it took us seven or eight years just to get out of the debt phase and then to begin to build that reserve. I think of guys like uh, Jason and Ryan Durfus, who have just attacked their debt. I see them posting those updates online of, of, hey, I've paid off one more debt. And I'm very grateful and proud of this church to have gone through financial peace. Probably time to re-up that in the coming months. Amen? But with all that protection, it does lead me to think about the mission field. And we will be giving our special missions offering next week. And I think, gosh, is, is this the time to give our missions offering? And so, uh, well, the answer will be yes. We will give whatever you can give sacrificially next week. And all of our weekly offering and everything that we collect next week will be part of our missions offering. And that really, uh, it doesn't have to be done all next week. If you want to begin a season of giving, if you want to give later in the year towards missions, you are certainly able to do that. Uh, this is what it will go towards, but the board has uh, revised this resolution uh, mainly because of the order of which things give. If you remember in financial peace, if you're below the line, you don't get paid. So we realized that uh, this was the original resolution that passed in order of what we would give, uh, but the Caribbean Mission Society is further down that list. And so the board has revised that resolution to uh, first and foremost, give our weekly offering. Secondly, South America. Third, the Caribbean Mission Society. Fourth, the local mission here in Florida. And then the last two are travel related. And I think with COVID and with everything we're experiencing right now, those would be the least uh, in our priority of giving member missions, uh, missionary support, and even leadership travel. Uh, so whatever we give, this will be the priority of what it is paid. If you like to know the multiple, uh, it is about 9.3 times our weekly. So if you give your weekly offering plus eight or nine times uh, next week, that would be about the goal. And I will say that uh, in terms of our missionaries, we have 14 churches in the Caribbean, uh, only five of which are led by paid staff. Uh, nine are led by that tent maker model. Uh, and so we would love to devote more resources to the Caribbean to where more of those churches could be able to support full-time staff. And of course, we also support Argentina and the great job that they've done down there. In the last 10 years of Sebastian and Sarah E being there, the church has gone from about 30 members to about 150 members. And then they have also sent out a mission team to San Luis and the church there is approaching a membership of about 30 as well. So it certainly has benefited us uh, as a mission to have those devoted to the cause of the gospel full-time. Amen? For those who have figured out how to give online, you can go to orlandochurchofchrist.com and just click online giving. We are going to be moving to a new website, which is also active, orlandochurch.org. Uh, and the same thing, we just click donate, and that will take you to a page that's very self-explanatory. Uh, you can select uh, what type of offering you're going to give. If you're giving weekly offering, you can select which region you're a part of. If you are giving to the benevolent fund, you can click benevolence. We have seen a surge in our benevolent requests, but I'm grateful for our board uh, that has really set aside funds over the last few years to where we have the resources to fill those requests during this time for our church. And then lastly, next week or even this week, if you'd like, you can click on missions in whatever region you're in and give to foreign missions as well. So you can designate where that money is going. On your phone, it works the same way. OrlandoChurch.org takes you to that same page. And if you're a member of our church and part of our church database, you can even log in as a member 
you can set a uh, weekly offering, set it, forget it, and then you get that email each Sunday morning that your donation has been processed. Or, like Frank Jolly and others, you can stick a check in the mail and send it to Orlando Church of Christ right here to Goldenrod, uh, and uh, we accept that as well. So again, I, I want to commend this church on their giving. I wanted to give you an update on where we're at with our special missions and the Vision Conference. So thank you for your patience uh, during this time, and thank you for your attention as we uh, continue to worship God online in our homes. Let's say a prayer.